Real estate around the world is excessively expensive. You can measure this easily by comparing it to the median household income. We've accelerated into astronomical territory. Since the housing crisis, real estate in the US has recovered from what was an extremely forceful downtrend. 10 years later, however, we are still in an interesting predicament. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. If you're a subscriber on here, you know that I cover the real estate situation very often. It's important. Everybody's got to live somewhere and the details of which are all shrouded in mystery because we are seeing prices that are excessively high still. But if we dig one layer deeper, we're going to uncover a lot of information. Today I want to focus specifically on negative equity. We're going to look at the United States first, then we're going to look at Australia, and then I want to touch on the UK at the end, so let's begin right away. Directly from CoreLogic's own website, Homeowner Equity Insights, this is from the first quarter of 2019. Towards the bottom, negative equity, often referred to as being underwater or upside down, applies to borrowers who owe more on their mortgages than their homes are worth. Negative equity can occur because of a decline in home value, an increase in mortgage debt, or both. You might think to yourself, how in the world could this be possible? Well, think for a second. If somebody buys a home for a million dollars and then the prices are cut by 20%, now their home is worth 800,000, so suddenly there is $200,000 being chopped off of that value and people are underwater as a result. This is really affecting more people than you would think. Let me show you the stats. This information is just showing you the fact that from last year to this year, we are definitely doing better. There are less homes that are underwater. However, if you look at the statistics, it isn't pretty. Looking at this, 2.2 million homes are currently underwater. Now, while this has improved quite a bit since the housing crisis, it still means that there are millions of people today that are in negative equity. I should also add, how many individuals do you think are right at the borderline? There's probably millions more that could be added as soon as prices fall just a small amount. Think about all the people today that are $200 away from an emergency. I've shown you those stats before. This tells us that we are very close to something triggering and it actually affecting people so dramatically. National aggregate value of negative equity, just showing you a map of the United States and you can compare the different areas, whether you're looking at maybe Washington state, Texas that have low levels or higher areas that are on this that just tell you, giving you a bigger picture of what's happening here state by state. The takeaway from this is in the second paragraph, negative equity peaked at 26% of mortgaged residential properties in the fourth quarter of 2009. As I said, we've gotten a lot better, but we still have a problem. Think about it. We are 10 years out from the crisis and yet it is still persisting that people, millions of them, are finding themselves with negative equity. We've got an issue that is not being dealt with. Now I'm going to turn the page over to Australia. This case here, they're talking about a particular person and then they get into the issue of negative equity. He bought a home for $336,000. Three years later, it's valued at two hundred and eighty. dollars Now, if he sells the house, he's going to be staring at a $56,000 debt. So he's forced to stay put. But then he falls behind on his bills and this puts him in a very interesting predicament. It isn't just this person, but it goes for so many people. They can't move because of the problem that this created, and they need to move because of their debt dilemma. This is what happens to an unfortunately growing number of people. Loans in negative equity on the right hand side, clearly there are more people in Western Australia and the Northern Territory that are affected by this. It looks like approximately 14 or 15 percent. That is extremely high and it isn't just these areas of course. When you look around and see how hard some of the areas, particularly Sydney, that has seen a dramatic fall in their real estate. I believe the price last time was 15 percent down from the peak, just giving you an idea of how far things have fallen. Again, this data comes from CoreLogic, Perth, peak to trough declines, showing you the difference from 2014 to 2018. These statistics give us 
a very troubling scenario that they are down 19 percent and that is as of 2018 so i want to see the stats as they come out further that is definitely exceeding 20 percent right now Australia home loan 90 plus day delinquencies Western Australia is leading the race if you want to think about it like that all of the different areas are having an issue here with delinquencies this is going to increase right now we have not even had a crisis that has been known around the world it's just little issues here little slowdowns don't worry about it everything's under control imagine when we actually encounter an admission to the global economic crisis these numbers are going to multiply but even as they stand, just think about what happened during the subprime crisis. How many homes do you think back in 2007 were subprime? It was a fraction of the total. Now of that fraction, how many subprime mortgages began to fail? It was a fraction of the total. Now a fraction of a fraction created the biggest crisis we've ever had since 1929. So don't think that you need to have a large percentage of the total to actually create a problem. It doesn't work like that. It's because of derivatives, something that I warn about in just about every single video. And now to touch on the UK very quickly, the help to buy equity scheme could leave buyers in negative equity and has left the government exposed to significant market risk according to the National Audit Office. Can you believe this? Help to buy. Now this is making it very easy for people to get homes that shouldn't be buying in the first place. Essentially, they are worried that a lot of people are not going to be able to pay back and that's going to leave the taxpayer with footing the bill. Probably will. Through the government's help to buy equity loan, buyers can borrow 20% of the cost of a new built property, 40% in London, from the government with no loan fees for the first five years of owning the home. They're making it so easy for people to get in today. This means buyers only need a 5% cash deposit and a 75%, 55% in the capital mortgage to make up the rest. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to get people into the homes. They're trying to make it available for them. But ultimately, if they can't afford it through traditional means, it is taking a huge risk and putting that on top of the back of the taxpayer. There are enough schemes already to make money freely available to people who shouldn't even have it in the first place. This is dangerous. It's dangerous and unfortunately, this is going to create another problem on top of all of the others that are building up at this time that's all for this video if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a like on these videos you are supporting me and helping to push these higher up in the search rankings so i do appreciate that very much if you want the financial education that was withheld from you then you need to read these two books i've got all the details that you need so check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. I got some more information for you. It's all related here. So if you watch this video, you're going to be able to find out some more. Click on it and I will see you there.